Hey everyone, this is Inspire Africa. I am Jerry Fisayo Bambi. Now, travel restrictions still remain in most parts of the world owing to the coronavirus pandemic, but then inspiring stories still abound all around us. On this episode, we take a look at some. The story of a man in Kenya with a vision for the deaf. Plus, the cultural export of the African diaspora in South Korea. And at the time when many were stuck at home, looking for ways to relieve the panic and stress from coronavirus, in Nigeria, comic actors like Taoma was the answer. Uh, yeah, Tao. Me had a good show. Say you didn't hear of coronavirus. My pastor said no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. All of this plus much more on the show, but first, the story of the band known as Tre Bonbon in South Korea. South Korea is widely regarded as one of the world's highly developed nations. Rooted in its strong and centuries-old tradition, the country is today most famous for its huge and popular tech brands and its music export, K-pop. Not much is known of the African influence or impact in Korea, but this band, Tre Bonbon, led by Burkina Faso's Amidou Diabate, is amongst those making strides. Diabate plays Kora, Balafom, and West African djembe drums, which create a unique sound. He came to Korea in 2012 to be part of a music band for the then newly created African Museum. They sing from their hearts, which is very heartwarming. It communicates a message. Even if I don't understand the language very well, I understand what their heart is saying. It's important to me. So for me, music has no boundaries. In 2015, Diabate started to give musical courses to children at a cultural center in Seoul. Many of the children now know how to play some African drums. Here, invited guests at the Seoul African Fashion Show are waiting patiently. Behind the scenes are models getting ready. And the woman behind it, Ghanaian-Canadian teacher Rosemary Manso. They are curious, there's that curiosity. And then when they see the fashions and they see the models, they're just like, oh, wow, like, uh, they're amazed, you know, and they are, I feel like they are inspired. And Rosemary came to Seoul in 2016 as an international model. In 2017, she launched the show with the aim of promoting African fashion in the Korean world. But for others, like Lore Manfo, there are no limits. The Cameroonian now does Korean poetry known as Pansori. So whether it is in music, art or fashion, what is more important is the focus on African beauty and excellence. Buoyed by television and the internet, a video is keeping the modern society engaged. But how about for those living with disabilities? In Kenya, one man willing to carry the deaf along is creating impressive videos for them. Let's take a look. In the fields of marketing, learning and entertainment, video is king. Video content creators and media organizations have however given less attention to persons living with disabilities like the deaf. In Kenya, one man by the name Samuel Buruti is out to change this forever. When you try to do something, many people out there ask how, how can a deaf person do that? Samuel seeks to reveal what he describes as a silent world of the deaf, a situation in which the deaf often interact only with themselves because very few people understand sign language and with minimal media targeted at them, most deaf people endure systematic seclusion. Many media houses that we have, they only interpret news. Whereas there are so many programs that they would be interested to watch and follow. Unfortunately, we do not have interpreters for such. Taking the bulls by the horn, Samuel created his own media content for the deaf, starting with a YouTube channel. His project, Deaf Media Key, is a dream driven by simple resources where his smartphone serves both a studio and a editing suit. So he started with songs, and then later 
he found out that only a few people liked the song, so he left that. So he started again comedies, and many people liked his comedies. Samuel lost hearing at the age of eight. His wife Esther, whom he has known since their days in teaching college, now serves key to his dream. Both being full-time primary school teachers, make these videos even working for your children. Their hope is that their work inspires more people to play part in creating a more inclusive society. Now, if you thought coronavirus was a joke, well, it is not. And comic actors who find nearly everything funny aren't even taking it as one. Here is one of them from Nigeria. Ah, even Meta and Vatican City, they are locked down. Ah. Myself have locked down. Because hey, there is nowhere you pray to God, the governor has had you. Yeah, though. Good afternoon. Why don't you get solo? Uh, <laughs> oh. And from Lagos, Nigeria is Miriam Apol Kagi, popularly known as Taoma. Taoma is so good to have you with us. And, uh, you know, you are only a 21-year-old uh, um, comic actor, but then you are one of Nigeria's most watched online. Um, how powerful, Taoma, do you see your platform using social media such as Instagram and Twitter? Um, social media generally is like one of the biggest things right now because with social media you can take yourself out there without anybody's I would say, let me not say anybody's help, but um, without having to wait on anybody. You can start yourself, um, create an Instagram account, a Twitter account and all that, and start growing yourself. And before you know it, you're going to become as big as anything with social media. And also, Nollywood actors and actresses are also coming to social media to promote their stuff. So if, if they make movies, they have to come to social media to make awareness, to create awareness for people to go and watch the movies. So it's like social media is a really strong thing and has a very big influence on everything we do right now. Okay, Taoma, so your message is about coronavirus. Very funny, at the same time, instructive. How well do you think these messages have been received? Uh, I've, I'm really surprised at the length that video has gone because people really accepted it and people really love it. And I'm, I'm overwhelmed at the length it has gone. And I'm sure it has passed enough message across to people, especially mothers out there. So you play the motherly roles and character in your content. How well do this portray the Nigerian society? And what are you hoping to change through your messages? Okay, let me start with the first one. How well did they portray Nigerian, the Nigerian society, uh, Africa as so, well? Like, that is like the African parents with Yatao, although without the slaps, not like every African mom beats their kids like that, which, like, that is really, really uh, untrue. I'm just trying to show you how parents behave, how mothers especially behave. And it's training a child, so... Without the slaps, I will always emphasize on that. Without beating your kids like you want to kill them. <laughs> so that's it. Tell us, what are some of the challenges that you face uh, during your work? So one of the challenges are, uh, you know, time constraints to, e to edit the stuff. Sometimes I have to edit like two videos uh, and get it ready at once. And also sometimes I have to wait till night to shoot because of NEPA issues and all. Yeah, I think those are just main challenges that I have. Yeah. For those wanting to be like you all over Africa, what would be your message? What would be your advice to them? So, as I always say, be as natural as possible, be you, and create a niche for yourself. By the time you create that niche, you follow that niche, so people will know you for who you are. When people are watching your skin, they know what to expect from you. And be prayerful and work hard. Talma, my best wishes for your work. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. 
Stay safe. Use your mask and your hand sanitizer and dab every time you want to cough. Thank you. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode of Inspire Africa. Thank you very much for watching the program. You can see it again by going on africannews.com and euronews.com. Also, you can find me right there on the address on your screen. I'm Jerry Bambi, leaving you with some of the images that caught our attention on social media. See you again. Seen on At Everyday Africa on Instagram, this photograph was taken in Cape Town, South Africa. And we find the picture here in Uganda that tells it all, an empty classroom during lockdown.